still setting us up. Okay, we're good. OK. Bonsoir, de, euh, bonsoir tout le monde. Bienvenue au conseil du le 1er juin 2020. Um, and welcome uh, to those who are watching us online for what is, uh, I suppose, our, I think, our sixth council meeting now that we have done um, since the beginning of uh, the outbreak of COVID. And I just wanted to touch on a couple things, and we have some out, uh, some very important updates from uh, council members as well. So as, um, just to begin, um, as we see the troubling events that are happening uh, in the United States, and as we witnessed last week, um, the murder of George Floyd at the hands of, um, at the hands of uh, a police officer, I just wanted to, uh, you know, I think it's important that we discuss this and just talk a little bit about how we want to continue and engage in the city of Westman and what, and uh, what we were going to do. And as it's more as a, as a parent and as a mother that I dealt with this this weekend, where I had to explain, um, you know, and my kids, my kids grew up in a household where there is no. Um, you know, they, they've they've never been taught any hatred like that. So uh, they they uh, respect all different colors of skin and different religions, and it doesn't matter who you love. And then to have to teach them um, why this um, it was it was a real lesson to me about teaching them why this hatred does exist, and that and that I guess is a miss as a parent on my part. That while they live in a world where they've been brought up to accept everyone, uh, they didn't fully understand that that wasn't actually reflective of the real world. So that is, uh, that is uh, troubling, but I, it's in, very important that we continue to do everything that we can, especially as elected leaders, as voices in our community, to engage with all parts of our community. Um, and you'll see some updates this week from the library, um, which are going to put together some books that I think might be helpful for parents to share with kids on this topic. Um, so you'll see that on our website in the coming days. Um, and uh, on the COVID front, um, and I'll, I'll let other counselors discuss on, on, on those issues as well, but on the COVID front, as this changes, day to day and you you see we have we make an announcement at the beginning of the week and uh by wednesday we have to we have to make a new announcement or, or change course and it's very important that as we go along that we become adaptive to all many of these new announcements but as dr aruda said that the, the closing down was the simple part uh it is the deconfinement that is the more challenging part and we see that as a municipality as we open up uh, tennis courts and playgrounds and uh, splash pads and get ready for the pool. And all of these things are incredibly complicated because they are not how we have typically run any of, um, any of our parks uh, and our programming before. So uh, we, everything that we do, we do in the interest of public health uh, and the safety of our citizens. And we recognize that uh, citizens need need and want many of these programs. So over the coming days and Councillor Gallery has a lot of updates of some of the things that we were opening. So I will leave um, some of the details to her, but you will see over the coming day, we are, we are working towards getting our playgrounds open to make sure it's in the safest way possible. Um, but we would, we would just ask that, that citizens and you know, parents and everybody who's in our parks to use common sense. Uh, we've been in this long enough that we know what the rules are. And I know Councillor Lullum has a lot of updates on parks as well later, but I mean, at the very least, do not leave your garbage in our parks. Um, our public works team is working incredibly hard to try and deal with um, the increased numbers in our parks, uh, but we need citizens to meet us, meet us along the way and certainly take your garbage with you as you leave the parks. There is, um, in case anyone was, was wondering, there is no maid service in our parks. Um, so, and on that note as well, I just wanted to give an update on the WAG, the Westmount Athletic Grounds, the uh, behind uh, what we call the WAG. So for uh, those who don't know what we're talking about, it's the, it's the park behind Westmount High School. Well, we need citizens to meet us. Oh, there's a little uh, 
back play there. But uh, so at the WAG this week, uh, residents saw fencing go up and they saw it go up before they could uh, be before they were told what exactly was going on. And that is that is very much our fault. We should have uh, given you more heads up and more uh, explanation and communication on on what the issue was happening at the WAG. And it's it is a field that, like all our fields, they all need constant maintenance. Every year we do fields, we we reseed, we aerate, we we invest in the fields. They need a lot of work every single year, and especially in a year like this where we've got a lot of people using them. So the WAG field uh, was slated to have that work done. And because of COVID and some timing issues with the, I mean, and the weather, the, it would have ideally been done a couple of weeks ago. Um, that did not happen. And there was a window after the heat wave, um, where the contractor felt that it was the best opportunity to do, uh, to invest in that field so that it actually is a field for the rest of the season, um, leading into the fall. And so that there's actually grass, um, grass on it. So I know that there was concern, the concerns of residents saying, well, you didn't water it and that's why you have to do it. It's not the case. It was so hard that it wasn't taking, that it wasn't absorbing the water. So the field has been closed, will be closed for two to three weeks, uh, to seed, to aerate, um, and to regenerate the growth on this field. And then it will be open again. I know it's not ideal. I know I, I'm a parent of three kids who have been off school as well. I know that every single inch of green space in this city is important um, and it's critical to everybody, not just to kids, to, see, to every single person. Green space is critical in this, in this time. And that is what the maintenance of this field is, the, the purpose of that is. So we, could, we can do better in how we communicate to you and we will um, make every attempt to do so. But it is important that uh, I know many of you have asked me to take down, um, have asked me to take down the fencing and to stop the the, the maintenance and investment in the park. I think if you saw um, the work that was going on there today, you would see that it, it, it it's begun. It's not just sitting there empty. They're actually working and uh, improving the fields. So uh, you're free to. Many of you have written me. You're free to co uh, continue to communicate with me on that. But um, those are some of the updates from me because many of them will be touched upon uh, by other councillors. Um, so I will hand it over to Councillor Bostock who will discuss as well um, a very important measure and you'll see some communication from the city as well on this this week about masks and just wear a mask in public, please. Um, we, we have plenty in stock that we're gonna be giving out to residents. We have more coming, more reusable ones. Um, but it's very important when you're grocery shopping in places where you cannot guarantee that you're gonna have two meters distance that you wear a mask. We are seeing an improvement, uh, I mean, knock on wood, an improvement in numbers, but we, we need that to continue. So I'll now hand it over to Councillor Bostock to give um, her update. Good evening, everybody. Um, just an up, update on on some public security issues. We uh, are public security is continuing to do some grocery deliveries to some of our more isolated seniors, um, and they are also distributing masks to those uh, who need it uh, while they're delivering the groceries. Um, and as Mayor Smith mentioned, we will be distributing masks at four locations in the city. Uh, the dates will be published on the website, so you don't need to write them all down right now. Uh, but Tuesday, June 2nd, from 8 to 10 a.m. at Westmount Park Church on Academy and de Maisonneuve uh, at the park entrance. We'll also be uh, Wednesday, June 3rd, from 10 to 12 at Victoria and Somerville. On Thursday, June 4th, from 8 to 10 a.m. at Green Avenue and de Maisonneuve on the terrace at saint saison And Thursday, June 4th, from 12 to 2 at uh, the hillside entrance to the WAG. Um, and public security will be at these locations with uh, the public safety tent handing out masks to residents, weather permitting. Um, they will be informed of the recommended ways to wear the mask and how to properly dispose of uh, personal protective equipment. Um, and the other update that I have for you is that all of our dog, ru dog runs are now officially open. So doggies all over are very happy to get a free run around. So that's all I have for today. Uh, thank you, Councillor uh, Cutler. Well, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, 
certainly echo uh, your comments and sentiments about everything that's happened in, in Minnesota. And I think that, um, you know, we all need to, to think about, you know, our own actions and, and how we can be supportive of um, you know, all the groups affected. Um, so I appreciate your, your comments there and the leadership around that. Um, you know, as I typically do, I'll be talking uh, about some of our public works and engineering projects. Um, so most, a lot of the work has begun. Um, I had a chance to check in on a couple of the projects over the weekend and um, they, they're moving along. So we talked about this um, a couple of weeks ago, but we're appreciative of the sacrifice the residents are making as you know we undergo the real work, the underground work. Um, it's much needed, uh, as I've mentioned before, but it's, it's on the way um, and it's, it's moving along. So we're happy to see that. I'll be moving a couple items this evening. Um, the first of which is going to be um, work on City Hall. So this is phase two of our restoration project. For those of you who do come to council meetings in the last several years, you remark on the deteriorating um, quality of the, of the building, um, the condition of the building. And so last year we undertook phase one um, and now we're, we're moving into phase two, which is going to be um, the roof work. Uh, again, very much needed on a building that's been under maintained for a long time. The uh, the second item that I'll be I'll be moving later um, is the purchase of four uh, of two four by four trucks. Um, again, these are uh, related to snow, which sometimes is hard to think about uh, when you're in a heat wave in the summer. But um, we're getting ahead of it, uh, and so we're happy uh, happy to see that's happening. Last comment I'll make as well. If you haven't seen the new street cleaners that are going around the city, they're awesome. I took a picture and put it on my Twitter last week. They are, they look amazing. Um, so anyway, there's some innovation. Uh, they're a lot more fuel efficient, a lot more um, effective than the old ones that I don't know how long we've had them for. But anyway, all that to say, um, I was happy to see those on the streets um, you know, last week or two weeks ago when they first came out. Anyway. Uh, and so if you see them, um, you'll see they're, they're pretty cool looking. So um, that's a positive, I guess, given everything that's going on. Uh, thank you, Councillor Cutler. Councillor Shammy, do you have any updates? No. Uh, Councillor Peart. Uh, no. No updates from you. That's correct. Uh, Councillor Breschke. Yes. Um, good evening, everyone. Uh, first, thank you very much, Mayor Smith, for making those uh, comments about what's the events that happened in Minnesota. Um, it's uh, it, it was it took us all by shock, and uh, and I think you are right. This is something that we need to talk talk about in the open. And um, well, thank you for mentioning that. And it is a preoccupation, let's say. Um, so the updates I have for you this evening revolve around waste. So residents are going to be happy to learn that there will be a hazarded, hazardous waste collection on January 20th. And it's going to be the same format as it has been in the years June past. June 20th. June 20th, not Sorry, January. June 20th. Saturday, June 20th um, at the Westmount Public Library. Uh, so we'll invite residents to bring their cans, paint cans, solvents, oils, batteries, aerosol sprays, pesticides, which they wouldn't have because it's not uh, legal in Westmount to have pesticides or herbicides unless you bought them before 1994 and had them in your basement. Uh, so none of that roundup uh, should be around, but uh, yes, you can bring old pesticides and chemical products uh, to that waste collection. Um, second, uh, if you're still not composting and you're considering it, please do. Uh, Public Works is distributing compost bins. I've been asked by a few families who are interested. Um, they are available. You just call Public Works 989-5311 and they do the occasional distribution every couple of weeks. Um, Echo Center update. So the LaSalle, both the LaSalle and Cote d'Ange Echo Centers are open. They're still working on winter hours. So they are open from Tuesdays to Saturdays. Uh, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. So they're closed Sundays and Mondays. Um, but due to COVID, they do uh, still recommend to postpone your visits to the echo centers until the end of the, of the period and store um, your goods, uh, your materials in, in your homes uh, as much as possible. Uh, 
Then finally, my last point is about bottle back, uh, bottles and cans. Uh, the collection drives are on. Um, so Metro and IJ ha have been and are continuing to organize collection days um, in exchange for donations. So we welcome all Westmount residents to take advantage of this. It's like a drive-through. Um, the locations and hours are available on their websites, but I can mention them this evening. For Metro, um, they are Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at select Metro banner stores, Super C on Saint-Jacques, Metro on Queen Mary, and Metro Plus on Beaumont. And IGA is 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Saturdays and Sundays at the parking lot of the IGA at 3964 Notre Dame West. And these are organized by uh, Jour de la Terre, Earth Day. And that pretty much completes my updates for this evening. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Councillor Gallery. Good evening, everyone. Um, merci, Madame Mérez. I actually am bringing to you some good municipal news. Uh, we have a lot of reopenings um, that are coming our way, and so I'm proud and excited to update you on the following. Um, firstly, the library will begin a phased reopening, um, which means as of next Monday, June 8th, there will be a curbside pickup that will be starting. It's contactless service. Uh, the library team is very busy right now working out the details and the logistics. Um, so please check our websites for the directives. It will be new, it will be different, um, So, it, but it's coming. So please be patient. Um, I know a lot of people are looking for this service and uh, one more week to wait. Uh, secondly, the McIntyre Awards. So you've heard of uh, the ongoing competition with the theme Freedom. We had 382 entries and we're very excited to announce that the winners will be announced this coming Wednesday, June 3rd, 11 a.m. online on both our city and library websites. And uh, I just wanna say a special thank you to uh, Wendy Whaling, who runs the Children's Library and Rosalind Davis, who works on the library board committee as our chair and has taken on the McIntyre Awards this year. And they took uh, a difficult challenge and they made it work and it's remarkable. So it's uh, so check in on June 3rd and see the winners and the prize giving and there's quotes and there's messages and it's really quite a beautiful online ceremony. Um, with regard to sports and rec, I have more good news. Day camp for Westmount residents will take place this summer. Um, it will be different. Um, we've just received the, many of the recommendations and we're working out the details. What I can tell you right now is that we will have four two week periods with a maximum of 67 campers per week. Um, registration should happen also the beginning of next week, June 8th. Uh, again, stay tuned. All the information will be on our websites. Um, lastly, oh no, we have pools um, and then we have tennis. Uh, pools, we've got the green light to reopen. So that team as well is busy working behind the scenes. We're waiting for those official guidelines for the reopening. It will also be very different and uh, there will be new procedures. And again, all the information will be coming as soon as we have it. Uh, lastly, tennis. Just want to tell everybody that the seven hard court surfaces have been open for a couple of weeks now. The clay surfaces are being uh, maintained and fixed as of yesterday. So what I know is on Westmount Park, the new uh, the clay courts will open on Wednesday, and in Stainer Park and King George Park later in the week. So I will be passing the motion this evening for that service. Uh, we apologize in the delay for the clay courts. It was really tough getting the contract workers, but we've got them and they're coming soon. So thank you very much. And uh, that's it. Uh, thank you, Councillor Gallery. Certainly lots going on in both uh, in community events, library and sports and rec. So uh, Councillor Lullum, I know that you have some updates as well. 
I do. Thank you, Mayor Smith. Um, as mentioned earlier by Mayor Smith, we've been having a lot of complaints and issues about garbage in the parks, um, particularly the weekend before last. Um, we've noticed that the user, the number of users in our park has quadrupled. So there's far more people using the parks. Um, a lot of people come and use our parks, our residents use our parks, and we have a lot of apartment dwellers who don't have balconies or other spaces and they come and use the parks. So we all need to work together to help maintain the parks. Um, it is not okay to toss your trash on the, gar on the ground. There are waste bins and we have augmented them. We are currently, we'll be going, we've gone out to tender and we're currently assessing for new waste baskets as we spoke earlier last month about um, for all the parks and public spaces. But in the interim, we've put out some rollout uh, garbage bins or trash bins to augment what is already there. We've also hired seven auxiliary workers through Public Works to work nights and weekends in the parks, um, in the squares and the commercial streets. Um, but that doesn't make it okay to throw your trash everywhere. So please use the bins, um, respect the parks, um, make them a lovely place for everyone to go to. Um, community gardens, uh, the opening went well. Um, we're now going to segue into longer, we've segued into longer hours and um, we're allowing the users to self-regulate. So um, we hope they'll keep following the rules. So far the training and everything went really well and um, we'll be removing um, the, the attendance. So please keep following the rules and enjoy your community garden. Comfort stations are reopening. Um, however, not the water fountains. So um, you need to bring your own water bottles if you go to our parks or sports uh, areas. With regards to the merchants and the commercial areas, uh, we continue with uh, the director, uh, Tom Fleece and uh, um, urban planner, Nicolas Gagnon, uh, Councillor Pert, Councillor Gallery and myself, we continue to meet with the merchants associations to work through looking at uh, using public space for terraces. You'll see tonight that we're going to be passing bylaws, uh, the first reading of bylaws to allow the use of uh, some public spaces towards making terraces um, for when the restaurants open, but also to make some communal parkettes um, for people. Um, we uh, had webinars um, last week hosted by Matthew Aronson. Uh, they both went very well. One was for the uh, owners of buildings predominantly on um, rent subsidy programs through the government and uh, other programs as such. And the one last Thursday was for the merchants and the both of them are posted on our website. On the merchant one, there are many, many different funding um, programs with links to them on it and explanations of what you need to apply. And I urge all of our merchants to look at them. There's loans, there's also subsidies. Um, and we'll be looking at an exciting new program through the agglomeration um, uh, in the coming weeks. Um, you'll see later tonight that we'll be allocating funds to the commercial areas um, through a new business resolution. This is to help uh, create public markets, public spaces to uh, buy uh, furniture for these uh, spaces, etc. So we're trying to do everything we can to um, build up the commercial areas to encourage the, with social distancing, uh, the use and the promote our, our and help our merchants because it's a really tough time for them. Restaurants are not open yet, but they are doing takeout. So that's why we want to make some commercial, some public spaces that they can, people can use to eat the food that they buy, et cetera. And always welcome to hear from you if you have any suggestions and the like. And uh, that's my report for tonight. Thank you very much, Councillor Lalam. Uh, Councillor Kez, do you have an update? Yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor. I just want to bring to your attention that some post-dated checks for the second installment tax were wrongfully cashed on May 25th instead of June 29th. This was an in innocent administrative error and each resident is being contacted to and are offered a refund. To date, three residents, I believe, and one business, commercial business, asks for a refund, but everyone's being offered the choice of a refund. So just want to bring that to your attention. Thank you very much. Um, so, and thank you for all the updates. Uh, 
council has certainly been uh, busy over the past um, over the past couple months, and we're always busy, but uh, ex even more so now. But um, I just want to reiterate that as we deconfine and as you know, we see people more and more out. We we really have to adhere to the two meters of social distancing and to continue to, you know the the masks in public the two meters social distancing staying home um it, it's tough but we need to uh we need to get through it and i know it's going to be it's, it's a different summer it's a difficult summer for many um but hopefully as we continue to adhere to the guidelines of public health we get to the other side of this so um i look forward to um uh, many of the initiatives coming out, you know, lots of stuff is happening in, in the commercial sector. Uh, public security is hard at work and continue to support uh, some of our most vulnerable in our community. But I would also just like to thank all of the, the, the merchants and the grocers who have been open the entire time um, and have really done an incredible job of making sure our community continues to be fed. But uh, I want to wish the merchants luck. And, and this is a whole new way of operating for them. And I just would really like whatever, when you are purchasing something, just if you can, please try and do it locally and support our local merchants. Um, they are a very critical part of the fabric of our community. And um, so when you can, please, please buy local. So um, with that, I would, um, I guess we begin with our la première période de questions. Um, je pense que on a des questions. And I'd also just remind, uh, we can have, uh, you can submit, uh, that a city clerk will confirm this, but you can submit questions throughout, right? And you are on mute, the city clerk, so if you would. Absolutely. Thank you. Those uh, questions may be submitted and asked at the second question period. Throughout the day, we have an online form available that we encourage everyone to make use of. And that is what makes up our first question period. It is available to be used on the day of council meetings uh, from 8.30 a.m. until 4.30 p.m. Um, and uh, questions can be submitted then as well as now on the YouTube live system. Okay. So, let's move to. Sorry. Merci beaucoup. So, without further ado, those questions are the following. We have our first question from Mr. Daniel Lambert. The question is as follows. Um, okay. The question this is the title create a new car free plaza between Alexis Neon and Dawson. This is from Dan Lambert, Association of Pedestrian and Cyclists of Westmount. For the past 18 months, the Mezzanov has been closed between Atwater and Wood for STM repairs to the roof of the metro station. The repair work is expected to be finished by year end. During this work, a temporary sidewalk and bike path was installed and driver access to Alexis Neon parking lot and to the small Dawson parking lot has been maintained from wood. The street closure has reduced through traffic along the Mezzanov west of wood, making the Mezzanov quieter, safer, and more attractive to the Mezzanov residents, as well as the many pedestrians and cyclists who use the Mezzanov daily. It has had a positive impact similar to the closure of the Mezzanov through Westmount Park many years ago. And the question is as follows, we ask that council Consider permanently closing the section of Demesinov to traffic and in its place create a plaza which would incorporate the popular Demesinov bike path, the busy sidewalks, the popular student crossing between Demesinov and Alexis Neon, possible terraces in summer, and the addition of green space. Knowing that officials are currently preoccupied with the COVID crisis, we do not expect that they would have the time over the next six months to thoroughly examine this idea. So we ask simply that Westmount agree to extend the temporary closure of this section of Demesinov continued through next year. This would give time to study design options in discussion with Alex Neon, Dawson, Ville Marie, and Montreal, and possibly to test a few simple concepts to see how the population temporarily appropriate this new public space. Our association has some ideas, which we'd like to share with officials at the appropriate time. Emergency vehicles could use the bike path for access to Alexis Neon and Dawson College, something which has not been possible for the past 18 months. 
And last point is, of course, Ville Marie and City Center would also have to agree to extending the temporary closure of their portion. Um, is that the end of the question? Okay, thank you. Uh, very detailed question from Mr. Lambert, who, uh, as as many know, is a very active uh, active citizen in our in our community. One which we very proactively work with uh, to discuss pedestrian issues, cycling issues, how to better use public space, and I would say. It's a it's a great idea, I think, and one that's very worthy of exploring further of how we could um, how we could integrate that. And the diversion of traffic has proven that it's uh, it it is a very seemingly a very manageable situation. But I think one of the this is another issue where it shows one of the um, I mean, if there is a one of the good things that has come out of this very difficult situation is that it's brought about a very needed conversation about how we use public space and how much space is allotted to cars and parking and how much is allotted to, to people um, and people using the public space. And there are thousands of students in Dawson College. And if you go in uh, and you go into the plaza there where you know where the restaurants are and so on, it's packed, it's stuffed. Um, and the back and forth between the Metro um, and Alexis Neon, there's there's a ton ton of young students walking through there. Uh, so I think this is a this is an idea that is very worthy of uh, further discussion. Uh, and I, I assure Mr. Lambert that it will be. Um, does anyone else want to comment on this? I know I, I see lots of heads nodding, uh, and maybe it's an agreement. So uh, Councillor Lollum or Councillor anyone, just I can't start with Councillor Lollum. Yeah, I think, you know, much as we're talking about building plus sets and whatnot, there is a perfect place. Um, there's a daycare, there's a CGEP, um, there's lots of foot traffic of people going to the subway station. I think it's an ideal place to look at doing a uh, public space. Okay, great. Thanks. Anyone else? It shows also the adaptability of the population. Right, we it, people were really upset about the idea of blocking off De Maisonneuve in that section for such a long period of time, and everybody's adjusted. They've changed their routes, um, and you know if it's already been done, then we have an opportunity to maintain something and create potentially something that will revitalize that neighborhood a little bit. So I think it's a great idea. And we add, I would add that we were looking at re, um, one of the things to bring traffic to Green Avenue um, was to bring people towards Green Avenue from that subway station. And so this is a perfect opportunity to, to do that. Um, and when we look downstream uh, on De Maisonneuve, the difference in the traffic it has made um, around Green and uh, De Maisonneuve in terms of for the pedestrians and whatever, it's a big change and much improved and makes that whole area safer. Great, thank you. Um, uh, next question, if there is one. Our next question is from Dennis Biro. This is a question on the updating of renovation guidelines. Our mayor and this council were elected almost three years ago on a commitment to update Westmount's out of date renovation guidelines. Since then, residents have been given several deadlines all missed. We have been waiting for this long enough. This work can be done remotely. Will the mayor and council follow through on their election commitment and update, it, update the guidelines? Uh, thank you for the question. I'll hand it over to Councillor Peart in a second, but uh, for those who are not aware of how, um, the urban planning department had reopened and done it online and also uh, some of the changes that they've made, which have been monumental. And we've had heard incredible feedback from residents in terms of um, applying for permits online for, for landscaping and, and fences and, and things like that. And, and as a very uh, streamlined approach of how they do that online. So I just, I want to applaud the urban planning department for, uh, for doing that and for, uh, really streamlining the, you know, cutting down on on some time for residents, certainly. Um, Councillor Peart, do you want to answer uh, in terms of the guidelines and the whole process that goes with that in terms of, I think you're on mute. 
doesn't look like you are, but I. So, I mean, I can, I can try and answer for counselor. There we go. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I switched off the Bluetooth. Um, so yeah, no, I would, I would push back a little bit on the, on the question because I think, um, I, I, I think we made some progress, some, some no tangible pro progress over, over our mandate. Um, we've had some small, some small incremental changes to, to the, to the guideline, but we've embarked on something that was just so much bigger than what we started out to do. We, we were, we're, we decided we realized that we couldn't just tweak around the edges that we had to make some very comprehensive changes and we set up a, a, a very structured um, a structured framework to consult the population throughout this process and that process was on its way it was it was it was in motion and then pandemic and and things were derailed from that from that um, that process so there is a deferral for sure there's the the, the the time, the or intended schedule is offset, is without a doubt. But at the same time, the urban planning department, they've not sat idle. They've been working remotely. They've been dealing with the same kind of pressures that all of us are dealing with, with being um, maybe unreliable connections, new hardware, new ways of working, pressures of, pressures of kids at home, the uncertainty of everything. And even throughout all of that, they are able to implement new procedures as, as Mayor, Mayor was uh, talking about, we, for the very first time, we were able to apply for some permits online. That's unheard of, unheard of in our, in our, in our history. And so we're making progress. It's been, some things have been derailed, but um, we're actually, the urban planning department is, 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 is doing more with less. And I, and I think that effort should be applauded. So um, what do I say? I mean, <laughs> no, we haven't hit our targets, but we've had other targets and we're, and we're moving along with, with, with speed and with force. So um, I'm, I'm proud of the work that we've done so far. And I know there's gonna be, there's gonna be some new achievements to come. So um, I ask for your patience, but yeah, we've come a long way. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Um, thank you. Next question. Our next question is from Ken London. And the question is the following. Regarding bylaw 1558, um, the question is, would the city consider including, number one, a phrase that ensures that the construction of the terrace occupying the public street do domain, that such construction does not interfere with the natural flow of rainwater, specifically along the sidewalk curb, such that the water gets to the city drainage system. Number two, that is deemed necessary by the director of the city that in the event of an emergency that the terraces is, are removed, including the surrounding fences, et cetera, be removed at the occupant's expense without any liability by the city of Westmount, that the insurance of the terrace user is the responsibility of the user holding the city harmless. The bylaw makes no reference to hours of usage, lighting, temporary heaters, et cetera. Article two, it seems to me that the max distance be established from the curb to be at a minimum two feet from the driving lane. It makes sense to me that such depth be limited to eight feet to allow the driver's door to open safely. Ken London. Uh, thank you, Mr. London, for your very detailed uh, question of which we will take under uh, advisement and certainly obviously share with um, our urban planning department and our engineering and infrastructure team. Uh, Councillor Lollum, do you want to add any further comments on this? Or uh, Councillor? I would just add that we've already covered the insurance issue that is in there. Um, the, uh, the user is responsible for the insurance and liability um, as part of the contract. However, as you said, we will uh, review his uh, suggestions and see if we make any additions to um, the rules. Thank you. Next question. Our next question is from Fred Gervin. First, and the question is the following. Firstly, I hope that Mayor Smith and all councillors have remained in good health throughout these circumstances. One question. A former councillor stated this 
just a few years ago. An urban plan, and this is a quote, an urban planning councillor sitting on the board of PAC is a conflict of interest, end quote. Does the bylaw, Code of Ethics and Good Conduct, allow for this practice to continue? Uh, yes. End of, end of the question. That's the question. Uh, yes, uh, absolutely. And it's uh, currently our urban, our, the member of council that sits on PAC is Councillor Peart. Uh, and he adds a huge amount of value there and uh, and shares that value with, with council. So yes, absolutely. It, I, I'm not sure... Um, I fully understand. I mean, I'm not sure who he's referring to or in what context that statement was made, but um, it is absolutely not a conflict of interest. If Councillor Peart were presenting a project that he was uh, the architect on, just like any member of the PAC, they would recuse themselves from that discussion and not, uh, not partake in that discussion at all. So um, I leave it at that. If Councillor Peart right. wants to comment, uh, he's welcome to. No. Okay. Next question. If okay, our next question is a second question from Ken London. And this is regarding pool repairs. Does Council realize that they are asking Westmount taxpayers to support a repair program which may or may not be recovered from the lawsuit, which translates into approximately an annual cost of $150,000? For only the next three years with no understanding of what may be required for the three years after that. I don't recall of any major repair at the YMCA since its reconstruction. Seems to me a second thought needs to be given to the project, which is not starting until late September anyway. Uh, thank you for your this question. Uh, I believe this has been answered before, but uh, the work is slated to start in the fall. It's absolutely needed to be done. Um, if the director general wants to weigh in on any of the details on that, he can. Um, and I do believe that the YMCA has had major work done to it uh, since its construction. Mr. Herchibis, do you want to add uh, anything guess, else uh, to this? I don't know if a uh, city clerk has anything else to add either, but uh, I mean, we have a lawsuit, but the work has to be done. It's not a question of a nice to have situation, uh, we're dealing with a situation that has to be addressed and uh, where it's part of our claim. And uh, if we don't do the work, it will degrade the situation, so. Yeah, okay. Any further questions? No, that's it for questions. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, maintenant of va commencer avec l'adoption du jour. Councillor Cutler. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move that the agenda of the regular council sitting of June 21st be adopted with the addition of item 20.1, appropriation, unappropriated surplus. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Bostock, all in favor? Uh, Carried. Uh, item number five is uh, l'approbation du procès verbal. Encore, Mr. Cutler. Madam Mayor, I move that the minutes of the regular council sitting held on May 19th, 2020 be approved. Thank you. Uh, seconder, Councillor Gallery. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Carried. Reports to Council. Uh, item 6.1, there are no reports tabled. Item 6.2, Councillor Cutler. Uh, are there any, is there anything for 6.2? I don't think there is. Eh? The minutes of the General Committee of Council held on May 4th, 2020 are tabled. Item 6.3, Councillor Kez. Yeah, the minutes of the Finance and Administration Committee held on January 22nd, 2020 is tabled. Thank you. Councillor Bostock, this point cap. The minutes of the Transportation Advisory Committee meetings held on April 21st, May 5th, and May 20th, 2020 are tabled and available on the city's website. 
Thank you. 6.5, Councillor Shami, there are no reports to table. 6.6, .6, Councillor Kez. List of payments for the month of April 2020 is tabled. Thank you. 6.7, Councillor Shami. Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. In accordance with bylaw 1507 on the delegation of powers to certain employees of the City of Westmount, the list of authorization of expenditures for the month of April 2020 is now tabled. Thank you. Item number seven, Councillor Cutler, adoption of Council's position on the items to be submitted to the Montreal Agglomeration Council. Madam Mayor, I move that the Mayor, or in her absence, the Acting Mayor, be authorized to make any decisions he or she deems necessary and in the best interest of the City of Westmount and its residents regarding the items on the agenda of the Montreal Agglomeration Council meeting to be held on June 18th. Thank you. A seconder, Councillor Breschke, all in favor? Aye. Carried. We've had, uh, on the agglomeration side, we've had, had uh, additional meetings beyond our typical once a month, obviously, to deal with uh, different uh, COVID-related measures. Uh, item number eight, adoption update to the complaint procedure concerning the application of a rate or of a condition for the supply of electricity from Hydro Westmount, Councillor Shami. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I move that the attached complaint procedure concerning the application of a rate or a condition for the supply of electricity for Hydro Westmount uh, be adopted. Thank you. Uh, a seconder on that, Councillor Bostock. Any further comments on that? No, not hearing any. All in favor? Aye. Carried. Item nine, Councillor Cutler, appel d'offre public restauration de l'hôtel de ville, phase 2, la toiture. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move to authorize an expenditure in the amount of $1,301,792.51, including tax credits for the restoration of City Hall Phase 2 roofing, tender number QB 2020-012, and to award Couverture Montréal Nord Limité, the contract for this for this purpose at its bid price for a maximum amount of $1,425,623.51, including taxes, the whole in conformity with the contractual documents of the call for tenders, PUB 2020-012, to allocate this expenditure in accordance with the financial information included, included in the decision-making file number 2020-1014. Thank you very much. Uh, do I have a seconder on this one? Councillor Peart, any further comments on this? You had mentioned it earlier, the work to be done in City Hall. All right, uh, all in favor? Aye. Carried. Item um, number 10, again, Councillor Cutler. Uh, call for public tenders acquisition of two new 4x4 cab chassis trucks for the city of Westmount. Madam Mayor, I, authorize, uh, I move to authorize an expenditure in the amount of $352,044.61, including tax credits for the acquisition of two new 4x4 cab chassis uh, trucks for the city of Westmount, tender number PUB 2020-017 and toward International Hibnal Inc., the contract for this purpose adds bid price for a maximum amount of $385,534.74, including taxes, the whole in conformity with the contractual documents of the call for tenders number PUB 2020-017, and to allocate this expenditure in accordance with the financial information included in the decision-making file number 2020-1017. Thank you. Uh, do I have a seconder, Councillor Shami? Do you have any further comments on this from your report before? Buying trucks. Buying trucks. There you go. Uh, all in favor? All right. Carried. Item 11, Councilor Shami, appel d'offre public reconstruction de massif de conduit dans la parc King George et la reconstruction de puits d'accès. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move to authorize an expenditure in the amount of 281000 $960, including tax credits, for the reconstruction of conduits in King George Park and the reconstruction of manhole 
number 146, tender number PUB 2020-034, uh, as well to award to Environnement Routier Energie Inc. the contract for this purpose at its bid price for a maximum amount of $324,183.51, including taxes, the whole in conformity with the contractual, contractual uh, documents of the call for tenders PUB 2020-034. And finally, Madam Mayor, to allocate this expenditure in accordance with the financial information included in the decision-making file number 2020-1005. Thank you. Do I have a seconder on that? Councillor Lalam, any further comments on that, Councillor Shami? No? Straightforward, We're just reconstructing the conduits in uh, KGP. All in favor? Carried. Uh, again, uh, Councillor Shami, appel d'offre public contrat de travaux civils, mineur pour Hydro Westmount. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Some more minor civil works for Hydro. I move to authorize an expenditure in the amount of $356,458 even, including tax credits for the contract for minor, minor civil works for Hydro Westmount, tender number PUB 2020-035, to award to Transelec Common Inc. the contract for this purpose at its bid price for a maximum amount of $409,837.59, including taxes, the whole in conformity with the contractual documents or the call of tenders PUB 2020-035. And finally, to allocate this expenditure in accordance with the financial information including in the, included in the decision-making file 2020-1006. Thank you, Councillor Shami. A seconder on this would be Councillor Gallery. Uh, any further comments on this? No? Hearing none, all in favor? Carried. Item number 13, Councillor Lalam. Appel d'offre public, annulation de l'appel d'offre public. Um. Whereas tenders were publicly opened on May 8th, 2020 for the redevelopment of the playground equipment in Prince Albert Park, tender number PUB 2020-042 and minutes prepared by the city's clerk's office are submitted to this meeting. Whereas following the analysis of the open tenders, the four tenders submitted are deemed non-conforming. I move that the four tenders submitted as a result of the call for tenders bearing number PUB 2020042 for the contract for the redevelopment of the playground equipment in Prince Albert Park be rejected on the basis that the bids are non-conforming, that a new call for tenders be initiated. Uh, thank you. Do I have uh, a seconder on this? Anyone? Uh, Councillor Shami? Any further comments on this? This is disappointing because it is um, a significant investment in this park that we will still make, but we need a uh, conforming bid. Do you want to yes. comment so further? It's the first time that we've used uh, the evaluation grid with one envelope. And the feeling by the engineering department is that uh, the, the this was not well understood by the um, tenders. And so following tonight, they will be contacting them to explain the process better. And we will be going back out to tender. I don't know if the director general wants to add anything to that. No, okay, I got it right. Okay. <laughs> Uh, but it uh, does not deter us from our investment in that park. No, um, we'll go back out to tender immediately. And uh, it just means it'll go in later in the year. Okay, thank you. Uh, item number 14, appel de proposition entretien de terrain de tennis dans la ville de Westmount, Councillor Gallery. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move to authorize an expenditure in the amount of $67,937.41, including tax credits for the maintenance of tennis courts in the city of Westmount, option three, tender number INV 2020-037, to award to, to Terrassement Jopat Inc. the contract for this purpose at its bid price for a maximum amount of 74432 cents, sorry, $74,400.32, including taxes, the whole in conformity with the contractual documents of the call for tenders by invitation INV-2020-037 to allocate this expenditure in accordance with the financial information included in the decision-making file 2020-1006. 
number 2020-1019. Thank you. Do I have a seconder on that? Uh, Councillor Bostock, any further comments on this? I know you addressed this earlier. Well, our residents will be happy to have these courts up and running. So yes, to have all of them up and running. Okay, all in favor? Carried. Item 15, avis de motion règlement 1558 modifiant le règlement 1447 sur l'occupation périodique du domaine public. Councillor Lallem. I'm to give notice of the intention to submit for adoption at a subsequent meeting of council bylaw number 1558 entitled bylaw 1558 to amend bylaw 1447 on periodic occupancy of the public domain. The object of this bylaw is to further define the conditions on which an application for a certificate of periodic occupancy of the public domain may be granted, establishing permitted configurations that allow for social distancing measures to be respected. A copy of the draft bylaw is tabled and available for public consultation. Thank you, and we do not vote on that at this point. So uh, again, Councillor Lalum, item number 16. Notice of motion and adoption of first draft bylaw 1559 to further amend zoning bylaw 1303 Cafe Terrasse. Councillor Lullum. Just a moment. My screen went blank, sorry. Um, here we go. Okay. I'm to give notice of the intention to submit for adoption at a subsequent meeting of council bylaw 1559 entitled bylaw 1559 to further amend zoning bylaw 1303 Cafe Terrasses. The object of this bylaw is to broaden the locations within the public domain where cafe terraces may be installed, as well as to clarify the language of an existing provision on the subject. A copy of the draft law bylaw is tabled and available for public consultation. And that you move that? Move that the first draft bylaw, number 1559, entitled bylaw 1559 to further amend zoning bylaw 1303, Cafe Terraces be adopted for su submission to public consultations in accordance with the provisions of the Act respecting land use planning and development, CQLR Chapter A-19.1, and that in accordance with the Order 2020-033, the public consultation meeting be replaced by a 15-day written consultation announced in advance by public notice. Thank you, and this does not require a vote at this point or at this stage. So, uh, and you had addressed these two issues before. Do you want to make any further comments on them? No, again, uh, the public will have an opportunity um, as uh, per Mr. London to su submit any uh, um, comments or uh, they would like to make to the, uh, the amendments, but what they are is to allow um, the use of the public domain for cafe terraces uh, and the like. And this even without the COVID uh, uh, period is something that moving forward, you know, can still be of great use to the uh, commercial areas. Thank you very much. Uh, item 17, uh, the city clerk, please. Adoption of bylaw 1557 to further amend bylaw 1544 to establish tariffs for the 2020 fiscal year. Thank you, uh, Madam Clark. Mayor. I'm just, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm just going to circle back to item uh, 13, unfortunately. I no. believe we uh, we missed a vote on that one. Oh, apologies. Um, no, 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 it's uh, just, uh, yeah, so we just will need uh, the seconder in the vote. So if, if we... Uh, uh, so Lala, item 13 is the call for the cancellation of call for public tenders. So Councillor Lullum, I would need, uh, for Prince Albert Park, so I would need a seconder on that. I thought it was Councillor Shammy, but I guess I was wrong. Uh, Councillor Breschke and uh, all in favor? Aye. Carried. So that's for item 13 on Prince Albert Park. Uh, and now we move back to item 17, uh, adoption of bylaw 1557 to further amend bylaw 1544 to establish tariffs for the 2020 fiscal year. The city clerk. Okay. No, it's, yes, that's the second time. No, so 17, adoption bylaw 1557 to further amend bylaw 1544 to establish tariffs for 2020 fiscal year. I would like to report that all formalities required for dispensing with the reading of this bylaw have been observed and that copies of the bylaw have been remitted to all members of council and are available for public reference. The object of this bylaw is to modify the tariffs applicable to terraces of commercial nature for the 2020 season. Thank you. Est-ce 
que je peux avoir la déclaration de la part de chaque membre du conseil présent à la fin qu'il ou elle a lu le règlement et que la lecture en est dispensée. So declared. So declared. So declared. So declared. So declared. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Kez. I move that bylaw 1557 entitled bylaw 1557 to further amend bylaw 1544 to establish tariffs for the 2020 fiscal year be adopted. All in favor. Uh, so I declare that bylaw 1557 entitled bylaw 1557 to further amend bylaw 1544 to establish tariffs for the 2020 fiscal year having been duly adopted, it is ordered that notices be given as required by law. Uh, sorry, uh, Mayor Smith, just uh, for the purpose of it, there's a seconder and I believe it's Councillor Lollum. Yes, sorry, Councillor okay. Lollum is seconding right. that. Okay. Thank you, Thank you. sorry. Um, and now we move to item 18, collaboration agreement MTQ. I'm going to ask to circle back to 16. I don't believe there was a vote for 16. Notice of motion of adoption of a first draft of 1559. For 16, 16. I did not. Uh, oh, there is needs to be a vote for that. Okay. So uh, a seconder would be Councillor Peart. All in favor? I carried. That is for the Cafe Terrasse. All right. Thank you. We voted on 17, and now we are moving to 18. Collaboration agreement, MTQ. And I hand whereas, that over to Councillor Kez. Whereas the management of Route 136, Highway 720, is the responsibility of the Ministère des Transports under the terms of decree number 292-93 of March 3rd, 1993, its subsequent amendments. Whereas the politique sur les bruits routiers adopted in 1998 by the MTQ sets out the ministry's position with regard to road noise. It also constitutes a recognition of its responsibilities with regard to the environment and specifies the rules on which it bases its interventions. Whereas the Turcot complex construction project does not currently provide for the construction of noise barriers along the new Route 136, on the territory of the city of Westmount between Green and Atwater Avenue, whereas the 315 meter zone located between Green and Atwater Avenue is characterized by sound level equivalent to or greater than 65 decibels, whereas the said politique sur les bruits routières mentions that noise pollution study is being conducted jointly by the MTQ and the city and the costs related to the study will be negotiated between the two parties. Whereas the city of Westmount by adoption of the resolution number 2018-10-2020 has accepted subject to the right to monitor the review that the MTQ undertake and carry out the studies required for the construction of the noise barrier along route 136 on its territory between Green and Atwater Avenue. Whereas both parties recognize the need to enter into an agreement in order to establish the distribution of costs with view of carrying out the final preliminary design study for the construction of a noise barrier on the territory of the city of Westmount, north of Route 136. Whereas the estimated cost of carrying out the project is $100,000 excluding applicable taxes. Whereas pursuant to resolution number 2018-10-2020, the city has agreed to pay under protest a maximum of 50% of the reasonable fees and costs that will be incurred within the framework of the mandate to be granted by the MTQ for this project. I move that the attached Entente de Collaboration be concluded with the MTQ for the final preliminary design study for the construction of a noise barrier on the north side of Route 136 between Green and Atwater Avenue in Westmount for the amount of $100,000 plus applicable taxes to authorize a maximum expenditure of $57,487.50, including all applicable taxes as a contribution from the city of Westmount to carry out this study. To allocate this expenditure in accordance with the financial information included in the decision-making file number 2020-1010, that the director general and the city clerk be authorized to sign for 
in the name of the city, the attached entente de collaboration, as well as the documents required to give full effect to this resolution. Thank you. Do I have a seconder on this one? Councillor Breschke. Councillor Kess, do you have any further comments on this? This is, yeah, a, this is a, lo a long standing issue. This then is a very long standing issue, and it's really just a details. It's to do a detailed analysis of the preliminary study of what can be put in place as a sound barrier. So we'll see. Okay, and it would be to share the expense of that study with the MTQ. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All in favor? Carried. Uh, now we move to item 19, Councillor Peart, uh, Peart, Urban Planning Approval of Building Permits. Okay. You can hear me? Yes. Excellent. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move that according to the recommendations made by the Planning Advisory Committee at its meetings held on May 19th, May 20th, and May 26th, 2020, the building permit applications Appearing on the attached list, reviewed under bylaw 1305 on site planning and architectural integration programs, be approved. Thank you. A seconder is Councillor Lullum. Uh, any major projects in here? Well, I'm happy to say that one of the major projects is the City Hall. So it's been approved by PAC, so we can proceed. There you go. <laughs> and all of these uh, building approvals have been done uh, online. All or, by Zoom. All by Zoom. So uh, that's not that, meant to be a plug. No, but they, uh, <laughs> but just to, so that citizens understand how uh, that PAC is still working, the urban planning department is still very much working um, and doing it all online. Okay, thank you. Okay. All in favor? Carried. And then we have one item of new business, item 20.1. Sorry, did we have a seconder on that uh, last item? Yes, Councillor Lullum. Okay, sorry. Was a seconder and all were in favor. And now uh, for item 20.1, I hand it over to Councillor Lullum. So for the appropriation of unappropriated surplus. Whereas by allocating surpluses to specific projects or elements, these amounts cannot be used for purposes other than those approved by council. Whereas the unappropriated surplus from the operating surplus for the fiscal year ending December 31st, 2019 is in the amount of $405,684. I move that the amount of $200,000 be allocated to ensure the vitality of the commercial sectors during the COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Peart, I'm sure, would, or, uh, would like to second that. Uh, any further comments? Does anyone else want to? Uh, I think everybody wanted to second that. Mm -hmm. Councillor Lullum, do you want to give a bit of a further explanation as to what, uh, what this funding is intended for? So when we've been talking about the changes in tariffs and fees for the terraces, we've been talking about um, doing motions for creating um, terraces and, and the use of uh, public space. Um, this monies is for part of that to create public spaces um, in our commercial areas, uh, sort of uh, like um, uh, Prince Albert Square, um, but more looking at uh, small ones in appropriated spaces, whether it be a part of a lane or uh, on the road. And uh, so we would need money for um, furnishing and uh, animating those areas. Um, parasols, things like that, and um, barricades, um, flower decorations, all of the like, as well as towards creating uh, a markets, uh, both in the Green Avenue area and in the uh, Victoria Village area. So towards coordinating those, um, and then all the other, we're, we're discussing many ideas with the merchants, but to have a fund towards making these ideas become reality. Great. Creating Thank vital commercial areas that our residents will go to and that will help further um, keeping our merchants here. A city requires commercial areas. It's part of our urban fabric and uh, we need to support ours. Okay, thank you. Uh, all in favor? Carried unanimously. So uh, the, the work continues certainly with, uh, with the merchants and their reopening. 
Uh, that Mayor great. Smith, if I, Mayor Smith, if I could just say, I do want to thank the merchants are working very hard with the city, and I'd really like to thank their participation. Um, you know, in these dire times, they every week give up time to uh, have very long discussions with us and uh, to then reach out to their other members and come back with information. And I just want to say that's really highly appreciated, and it's been a really good collaboration. And to our urban planning department, who already working at a distance are very taxed and have been really giving a lot of time to this. It's much appreciated. Great, thank you. Um, so all were in all in favor of that motion. Yes, um, that brings us to the end of uh, that part of the agenda. Do we have any questions from, uh, from online, Mr. Brownstein? We do not. We do not have any uh, second question period questions received okay. as of uh, as of right now. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so, I, with that, the meeting is adjourned.